Today's video is sponsored by Squarespace. Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to be redesigning popular airline logos. So this is one that's been requested quite a bit. And when I was thinking about like new logos I could redesign, one area that I haven't touched is travel. And I have a lot of opinions on airline logos and just airline branding in general. I think there are some really great brands out there. Like aesthetically, obviously I hate all companies, but I appreciate quality branding. So there are some really good brands out there. My personal favorite is the Southwest brand. In general, I think Southwest brand is very cohesive. It is friendly. It is a very approachable brand. It feels just like really welcoming and nice. And I, I frequently fly Southwest, so maybe I'm biased, but it's a really well done brand. And I will not be touching the Southwest logo today because it's awesome. I think it's cute. And if this is your first time watching me, welcome to my channel. I am sure I swindled you into my algorithm somehow how and happy you're here. My name is Kelly, use they them pronouns, and I'm a graphic designer. And I mostly specialize in merchandise design, but every once in a while, I do like to dive into some logo design. Again, it is not my strong suit, but I do have a lot of fun doing it. So that's what we're gonna be doing today. Um, I welcome you to stay and subscribe if you enjoy this video. Um, and if you don't like my logos, that's okay. You can move on with your life. That's all. It's really hot here, man. And my AC is out in the living room. So it's gonna be hot in here. I'm already feeling a little moist. <sighs> anyway, the drink of choice today is another Health Aid kombucha. This is the Pink Lady Apple. And Health Aid is just like, it's a cool, this is not sponsored by Health Aid, by the way, but I think their branding is really cute. Like this laid in, uh, can I speak? This label in specific is just so cute. Like that apple. Wow, love it. Anyway, so if you would like, go grab a snack, have a drink, whatever you may need to get through this long video, because today we are going to be redoing the logo of United, Delta, and the absolute insane airline brand that confuses me so much spirit. I chose these because United and Delta are two of the biggest airline brands in the world. They fly, like they measure it in a bunch of different ways. I'm like, which one is the largest airline logo? Um, but United and Delta fly all over the world. They have, I think like upwards of the most aircraft. So I wanted to do something that is pretty global and pretty well known. The United brand used to be a lot cuter. And then they did that classic like shift in like the mid 2010s where all of those logos just kind of became like really ugly. I don't know what happened in that time period where just a lot of logos just went <clears throat> The old United logo is a really awesome one. It was done by our good friend, Saul Bass. It's a classic logo. He did a ton of airline logos back in like the 60s through the 80s. There's a lot of really incredible recognizable logos that I'm sure a lot of you have seen, but the original United logo by Saul Bass is an absolute banger. And I can't believe they moved away from that because that tulip shape is so good. So shame on them to turning it into that ugly little globe thing. Anyway, so that's why we're doing United. The next one, Delta, it's just boring. It doesn't bring any joy to me. Um, there's a lot of jokes about Delta Airlines that it kind of sucks. And I think that their branding is just very subpar. I think it's just boring. And I think in our day and age, we need brands that look more exciting. It just gives me old washed up airline brand. Doesn't invoke any uh, any joy, like kind of like Southwest branding does is it's, it's very bright and friendly and exciting versus like Delta's like, oh, I have to fly Delta. Like that's what their branding flex to me, so. And then the last one, Spirit. I went back and forth about doing Spirit because I don't really like the brand. I know that their branding has kind of leaned into the fact that they're kind of a joke airline, which is fine. And that's the, that's what people say is that like you kind of might die on a Spirit Airlines flight because you've you just, it, you get what you pay for. They're very cheap and affordable flights, but everybody's like, please, <laughs> please don't crash on um, like every Spirit Airlines flight and also their branding confuses me so much. I think that their branding looks way too much like the Sprint branding back when Sprint used to just be like this black and yellow brand and also for some dyslexic folk like me, Sprint and Spirit, too close of words. I will read it as Sprint. I thought it was Sprint Airlines for a long time and then I was like, oh no, 
It's spirit. So I don't really care for the brand. I think it looks a little tacky. I think some of their ads are cooler where they're a little bit more playful because they're definitely catering to a younger market. So I think that we could like turn it up to be a little bit more sophisticated, but also keep it on the playful side and maybe move away from that super harsh, like complete black and like printer yellow. I think we could do something a little bit more interesting. Turn up that sophistication notch, but still keep it really fun and playful. So that's what we're doing today. Um, let's get started. Okay, so let's hop over. So starting with United, I learned a lot about United stuff that I didn't really ever care to know, but here I am reading about a corporation. I didn't know that United was started by the guy who founded Boeing. Fun little fact there. But um, yep, it was, United Airlines was started by William Boeing, the guy who created Boeing. And um, he went on to establish United Aircraft Corps in 1928. Um, and it was primarily for mail, transporting mail and some passenger service. And that's all I really care about. They are one of the biggest in the world. They have a ton of aircraft and they have some very questionable uh, marketing history. Like I know that there was like this ad for men only flight on the Chicago exclusive. They did have a lot of like pretty misogynist branding and advertising back in the day. Definitely mm, strange. But yeah, so this was the logo that was done by Saul Bass. So let's hop over to here. Um, looking at the history of the logos, this is pretty standard of the time. It's definitely giving me depression era um, branding. I do think the type on this is pretty good, but the, oh, that, oh, oh, ugh. somebody needs to fix that tracking. Then they went with this shield thing, which was very common in like World War II and post-World War II branding. A lot of people leaned into like that kind of militarized aesthetic because it was very uh, America forward and like that. So they went with the shield thing, very, very strange, but also I don't think it was very unique. And then they went with like this <laughs> weird, uh, point thing. Um, I think it works maybe great on the tails of planes, but uh, beyond that, it's not a very applicable logo format. And then they huddy, huddied, can I? Mm -hmm. Then they hired our good buddy Saul Bass to do the beautiful, the chef's kiss, the perfect logo for United. One of my favorite logos by Saul Bass, and that was this beautiful tulip logo. And they went on to use it for quite a number of years. So that's like almost 40 years that they used that logo because it worked. And you know what? If it ain't broke, don't fix it. And for some godforsaken reason, they switched to this ugly globe thing with that awful, awful font in 2010. And then they switched pretty quickly because they were like, wow, this is terrible, to just a sans serif cap with the globe. So it, it kind of lost some of its uh, flavor for me. I really do not understand why they would change the logo. It was probably a change in management or owner or whatever. So that's what we're working with. So the direction that I want to go is I think inspired a lot by some of the like uh, airline and travel posters of like the 50s and 60s. That was like a truly incredible time for advertising in general. There was so much unique type and printing processes going on that made some really unique art that I haven't really seen replicated too much up till today. So they're super like inspirational to me because people went nuts with type, like so fun. They really let like fun type fly, especially with a lot of like European and Soviet posters. Definitely some really unique type going on there. So this is what we're going. Um, I am really leaning into like a much bolder blue. You guys know I love a really bright cobalt. So I definitely want to lean into that. And so what I'm thinking is I want to take the word united. I want it to be a script and I want it to kind of have like these hard, almost like marker corners. That's why I pulled this piece right here. Like I kind of want these really flat edges on the script. Um, so we're gonna see how that works. <laughs> How that works out, because I only have a little bit of idea in my head. Um, I sketched a few things out to see kind of like uh, the direction I wanted to go. And I just kept coming back to this 
this little idea. Anyway, I'm gonna show you now kind of what I was thinking. I was really torn about what font I wanted to use. I was gonna use Cosmopolitan. So let's just write out, that looks like what United looks like now. This is Termina, this is a great font. We're gonna use it later. So let's go Cosmopolitan. I've talked about this font in past videos. It's a really awesome one. Um, it's a little too fun, a little, a little too squirrely for me, but I do really like it. Um, that use a little too much, but I think it'd be great for another brand. So that's Cosmo. I was gonna use that, but I think we're gonna go with Zanzibar. Filmotype Zanzibar. Now, it's already like harkens to that like 60s vibe, but we're gonna play with it a little bit and we're gonna try to connect it and kind of level off some of these uh, like corners so they are more aggressive and flat. Okay, so we're gonna use that as like our control group. And what I wanted to do was maybe pull I'm tracking a little bit closer. And then because I like stretching type, I'm gonna stretch some type because I could do whatever I want. And I also was thinking like maybe what if we uh, shear more upright? So that's where we started. This is where we are now. Cause I think it might read a little bit better and translate to more surfaces. So let's go with that for now. I'm gonna lock that, get an outline. Gonna pull in some rulers. Or what we could do is just turn on our grid. So to turn on your grid on a Mac, it's just command and then the little apostrophe key. This is really, really helpful. Just for like logo design in general. I know a lot of people will pull grids into Illustrator because they, they have like more specific ones that they like working with, but there is one already built in. So you don't have to, you know, do some extra work. So I'm, I'm still gonna align that up with my baseline there. And you'll notice that all curved letters have points that drop below the baseline because it visually appears to be lined up with something that is flat. Like you wouldn't see that necessarily as something that goes so far below the baseline, but that's still a pretty good distance right there. So you gotta keep that. Otherwise it'll look like the curved letters are just sitting a little too high, even if they're on the same baseline. All about visual optics, you know? Anyway, this U is bothering me quite a bit. Um, so what I wanna do is, I want to take some of these elements out and I wanna combine that with the regular you. So let's make these two different colors so we can see what we're working with a little bit easier. This is the original you, and then my new one is on top. So let's make this like blue. Oh, and what you can also do is turn your uh, snap to grid on, which essentially it'll just take everything and then snap it to points in the grid. Sometimes it's helpful. Sometimes it's really annoying. It really just depends what your workflow looks like, but it's, it's there if you need it. It's just under view and then down here. There's a bunch of different functions too, so you don't have to even use that. Let's merge those. Ooh, that's a much better U than the original one. Like it's cute, but I just don't think it works well for the more like sophisticated logo that we're going for. I do not like this tail on this U, so we are going to get rid of that. Or the one on here, it's got a weird hook, so I'm going to start to connect using the pen tool. Ooh, I love that so much already. Nice. I am afraid of it getting a little too skinny. Don't want it to get lost. All right. It's like some little bumps in there that I need to fix, but we're gonna just keep moving on. And I'm probably gonna use this little leg as a piece quite often as just like a, a baseline example of what I wanna do. The same thing here. And I'm really just trying to match kind of like the natural angle of the previous letters. We don't wanna go like too uh, dramatic with it because it won't look natural, especially when you're like making up, like recreating a script essentially. You don't want anything to look too unnatural like you added it. This is something I like to do a lot when I'm making completely custom type is like you end up making little like pieces that you can pull to replicate onto other letters. So you have that kind of consistency. It's very similar to what you do when you're actually designing a typeface, but this is more of a condensed version just because I'm making a font <laughs> or making a logo rather. 
I said this in previous videos too, but it's really important to remember when you are designing a vector-based, really anything, the less anchor points, the better. You can see when there's a bunch of anchor points on a line, and so it can sometimes start to like fudge with how that line looks, um, especially on curves. So the fewer anchor points you have, the cleaner the line will look. Like this, if you look at that versus that, there's just those right there building out that curve versus these are just too close together and they're not doing anything for one another. We can kind of round out that curve just like that. I'm going to get rid of these on the T because we do not need them. So we're gonna do something else. All right guys, there is our United logo. All right, moving on to our next victim, Delta Airlines. Okay, let's pull up a little bit of history on Miss Delta. Delta is one of the major airlines of the United States and is a legacy carrier. It's headquartered in Atlanta. Very cool, very cool. I wanted to read about its early history because I know they have kind of like an interesting history. <laughs> Delta Airlines history begins with the world's first aerial crop dusting operation. Um, called Huff Dayland Dusters Inc. The company was founded on March 2nd, 1925 in Macon, Georgia before moving to Monroe, Louisiana in summer of 1925. It flew a Huff Dayland Duster, the first true crop duster designed to combat the boll weevil infestation of cotton crops. <laughs> anyway, <clears throat> so they're crop dusters. Uh, anyway, uh, I do know that they uh, went bankrupt in 2005. Um, blamed the rising fuel costs, not their inability to not pay their CEO uh, millions and millions and millions of dollars. But yeah, no, definitely the rising fuel costs. Um, no sympathy for you, Delta Airlines. Um, okay, cool, boring. Don't really care too much about that. Um, nothing remarkable about Delta's logo history. There's no Saul Bass in these. Um, I do like kind of some of their earlier logos. I do think like this triangle is interesting. I'm not sure what's going on here. That might be racist. Um, but I do like the triangle. I think that's kind of interesting because obviously it's a Delta. Delta is a triangle. So I do want to still use a Delta shape. I will be moving away from like the arrow thing. I do think it's a good little icon, but I'm here to do something a little bit different. So absolutely nothing remarkable about any of Delta's logos. I think this one might be my favorite one. So nothing fancy going on there. Moving over to our mood board. Um, this is definitely more inspired by like those really cool, like simple modern logo, like iconography lockups. I want to do a triangle with some like speed lines. Kind of like, I was thinking almost like the, the, I don't know if that's Pink Floyd or some other, I think it's Pink Floyd, the dark side of the moon. Don't come for me, I'm a Beatles fan. Kind of like that, like that album cover with like the light going in and the rainbow coming out. That's kind of like the vague direction I want to go, but just keep it as a triangle with three lines coming out the side as the Delta and kind of like having that hint towards aviation theme with the lines. It's gonna be really nice. I think it's gonna be a nice and simple logo and I'm gonna use one of my favorite typefaces for this one, Termina. The cats are scratching at the door. <laughs> okay, it's getting hot. Get a... uh, that was weird. <laughs> I'm losing my mind. It is too hot in Portland, Oregon, man. <laughs> anyway, okay, so let's start with our triangle. I'm gonna use this. I can't believe I just did that. Um, okay, how do I? This is my haphazard way of making a triangle. It's not the best. All right, cool. 
got a triangle. Now, what I wanted to do was, I wanted it to be more like the A, like run with the A shape and see if I could kind of like make the A into the delta and then use the delta symbol in the logo. So it was like delta, but the A is the delta logo part. But I feel like, no. I think it'll just read as delta and then like the delta symbol. I don't think it'll read very well. So I think I'm gonna put it before the um, actual delta part, much like the previous one. So it's like you carry some of that brand recognition over. So anyway, here's my triangle. Is it the best triangle? No, but she'll do. I think we're back on to something. Kinda looks like a bird too, that's fun. Okay, cool. So we'll go with that for now as our little Delta logo. All right, so let's move on to our Delta text and we're gonna do Termina. I think I wanted Demi Bold. This one is my favorite. I might have to go with like Bold Bold because my Delta part ended up being so thick. <laughs> I mean, maybe we could go back to like having it centered like that. See, it's like, it could be there for the A, but I think it's a little confusing. Like maybe if we like took the bottom part out, it could work but I honestly really like it stacked like that. Let's do another option with it. Let's go ahead and make this like a really like nice warm red. Ooh, ooh, I kind of like that. Just like black and red. Maybe we make a slightly softer gray. Wow, guys, she is stunning. Look at that. Okay, this is so out of my wheelhouse. Like I never designed logos like this, but this is so fun. Okay, so cool. I guess there's uh, the Delta logo and some more fun stuff. All right. Now that it is past five o'clock, I made myself a little drink because that last logo went so well. Mmm, I made a Moscow mule. Nothing glamorous. Okay, so the last logo we are doing today is for Spirit Airlines. Oh, Spirit, you and your ugly, ugly branding. So, a um, little bit of background on Spirit. Uh, Spirit is an American ultra low cost carrier headquartered in Miramar, Florida in the Miami metropolitan area. Um, Spirit operates scheduled flights throughout the United States in the Caribbean and Latin America. They started as a trucking company Company originally, which is quite interesting. Um, they were the first airline to start charging for bags and they've been through uh, lots of scandals and the things that they had to uh, refund a lot of customers for. They've been sued a bunch. Yeah, that's um, about it. That's all you really uh, need to know background wise. They are a relatively new airline company. They were founded in 1983. So in comparison to some of the older airlines, a lot of them were founded in the 20s, 30s, maybe even like 50s, but Spirit is from the 80s. So um, she's coming from behind. So let's look at our logo timeline here. Yeah, no, 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 let's, there we go. So let's start with this old one, ew. And then like, they're like, okay, well, we'll just modernize it to this at that cursed, cursed time in design history of just when so many, so many logos just got so bad. It's I blame the dot com boom. They all went with like that same styling. Ugh, I hate it. Um, They're like, oh, well, we'll make the R like a shark fin shape. Mm -hmm. And then they just made this. It's the most boring branding. Um, the only thing I can give them is that like, they just kind of said like, fuck it with a lot of their branding. I think the planes are kind of at least semi cool a little bit, maybe because they do go with like an all over color. You can spot a spirit plane from really far away because you can see the yellow. It's kind of like a Southwest plane. You can always tell it's a Southwest plane because of how bright their colors are. You see a really cool blue plane in the sky, you know it's a Southwest plane. Same thing with Spirit is you see that god awful highlighter yellow, not even, not even highlighter yellow, just like printer ink yellow. So it's quite boring.
boring and I wanna do some cooler stuff with it. And one thing that I was looking at when I was researching all of these logos is that a lot of old airline logos in general and just like old, uh, air, whether it's airline logos or like cargo shipping logos, a lot of them had birds in them. And I think that's a very cool thing. It's a planes are the sky birds or air birds, or whatever. I think that's really cool. If you look at a lot of like the old uh, branding and styling of these brands, it is all like focused around these like bird logos. So I would like to make a little bird logo for Spirit Airlines because I want to make it, you know, like young and friendly and still really, you know, like fun uh, brand, but you know, we could do something a little bit cooler. So I'm gonna channel a little bit of like Saul Bass here, even though I feel like I was already kind of channeling Saul Bass earlier. Um, but we're gonna try some stuff and see. Um, but we're gonna start with the bird. My mic back up because I've been hitting it like crazy. Um, I have a few fonts in mind to work with here. So we're gonna go with Spirit. And normally, if you guys have followed me for a while, I love the font B. I think it's a great font. I do have some bones to pick with this weird little thing that's going on right here. It drives me nuts. And I don't know why they haven't updated it. Um, but yeah, like the S is like weirdly inconsistent. Like, what is that? So whenever I make like a logo or something with the S in it, I have to go in and like manually correct it and it drives me bonkers. So normally I would use B, but what we are gonna use today, which is a new font I discovered, it's called Origin Super Condensed. Oh my God, I love this. It's really tall, it's really condensed. So let's do a little side by side with B. So this is the Origin Super Condensed, this is B. They're awesome fonts, but I do like that this one is just a little bit cleaner. I do like this R more. I don't like that slanted arm on the R there, but like the T and the I are pretty much identical. Um, we have more of a rounded P. I do like more of a squared off P like that, but you know what? I'll take it for now. So we're gonna be working with the Origin Super Condensed. This is on Adobe Fonts. Go download it, it's awesome. Sippy sippy. So let's do our normal thing where we make a copy of it. I'm gonna squish a hair like that. Still pretty tall for a for a logo, but we're gonna we're gonna keep keep working with it. And then go to object transform sheer. I'm not gonna do that intense of a slant. Maybe we do like, maybe that. Okay, okay. The cats are rubbing on the door. I don't know if you guys can hear it. What did I just do? Ah, okay, command D, that does something. Wait, what is that? Oh, apparently that, wait, what? I didn't know, wait, that italicizes something, command D? What the hell? I didn't know that. Okay, looking into that later. Okay, so I like where this is going. So this is where we started with that styling. This is where we are now. So I'm gonna outline this and I'm going to do something a little taboo, but I'm going to hack off the top of this eye. I do wanna try something with the other eye, but now I feel like that T needs to be even closer. We shall see. Oh, well, let's just get into my bird idea. <laughs> okay, so I'm just doing this all off the top of my head, but I wanna do like a little flying dove type of thing. So that's like the top wing. I'm working off of the most haphazard sketch. Like it's like flying, like uh, this is like, and then like that's gonna be the bird's head. That's the bird, okay? That's, that's where I'm going with this. I swear like 99% of my design process is just me going, oh, that's kind of fun, or I'm not mad about that. I kind of want it to be like raised above a little bit, but like, I really don't hate that at all. I'm actually pretty happy with that. Okay, 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 Kelly. So then the other idea I had for this was like to put it in one of these, these little thingies. Shift X, 
And then we're just gonna um, let's kind of maybe match the energy of this guy. And now instead of just going like this to make it smaller, see how it changes the angle? I'm just going to grab my anchor points and drag those in to touch right about where the beak is. Okay, okay. I really like that. I mean, I do feel like it has lost, in a sense, the birdness, you know, the birdness. I feel like I kind of like that one better. <sighs> I mean, I had initially imagined this, but I'm still not mad about this. Um, I do feel like it fits with this quite well. Oh, that's how you make a triangle. Wow, that's embarrassing. I'm holding a shift option and then I went down, but now I want, um, do I want this? No, 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 no. There we go, that's what I wanted, okay. I don't know. Mm. Let's let's try. Let's try. Oh, there's be so small to fit in there. Yeah, that looks terrible. Okay, guys. Okay. We're not doing that. We're not doing that little burst thing. I did have the idea to do it around the bird, like kind of like that. Or maybe we just do like a circle. Maybe the rays are too much. I'm I'm beating this dead horse, man. I really want this to work. God damn it. Oh man, I really like both of those. All right, I'm gonna leave it there. I'm gonna leave it there. I really like where that is going, but I guess you guys will see the final result after I decide. I don't know, maybe I'll, I'll text a few of my friends, see what they say, but I really like that. So in the meantime, let's just slap this on some yellow, not, ugh, I hate that. See like that, that does not look like it. Mm, mm -mm. I do not like that yellow at all. Let's just pull that in a little tighter. So maybe we'll go slightly more like something like that. Like just like a softer, a softer yellow. And then let's make this a softer dark gray. Or maybe we go like something way more exciting, like green. I don't know, maybe red. Ugh, I'm going through a red phase right now. Can you tell? I don't know, something like that. But I guess you guys will see the final results now. Does your website look like this? Or does it make you want to do this? Worry not! Squarespace is here to save the day. Squarespace is a website building platform Cal Lauren has used for years to host their amazing design portfolio along with a host of other fun projects. Whether you're making your own portfolio, a side project, business, whatever it may be, Squarespace has tons of beautiful, fully customizable templates for you to choose from. The drag and drop galleries make uploading multiple images at once super easy, and it automatically formats to everything based on your style guides. It has never been easier to build out your dream website through Squarespace. Have an issue or need some help? No worries. Squarespace has countless blog posts about individual templates and how to use each function, along with award-winning customer service if you need it. Head over to squarespace.com slash or click the link below to get 10% off your first purchase. Start building your portfolio bit by bit and be sure to use code KELLORN, that's K-E-L-L-A-U-R-E-N, at checkout when you're ready to launch. Thanks to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. All right, that is all I have for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed watching me redo all of those airline logos. Let me know which one was your favorite down in the comment section below. If you enjoyed watching this video, be sure to subscribe to my channel. I have a lot of really cool comp, uh, boom. I have a lot of really cool content coming up in the next couple months, so be sure to subscribe, have your post notifications on, all that jazz. I'm posting a lot more, so you know you don't wanna miss out on any video. So um, if you have any ideas for future videos, of course, leave them down in the comment section below. Um, I hope you have a wonderful day. Thank you so much for watching, guys, and I will see you in my next video.